All right, y'all, so this is part two of That's right. welding mounts right together. Today we'll be welding the mounts so that we have completed to the trailer. Yeah. Got anything else to say? No, uh, no not yet. No, no. All right. We'll figure out what we're going to do no, no. I'll get it done. Got tools and equipment. Now let's get started. How you put a battery in, uh, in there? You're yeah. gonna teach us right quick. Huh? First, you gotta get your lens out, which is basically a holder here. It's on the inside, it's got these two little latches. You pull them in, take the holder out, which this would be a part of. Uh huh. And it has these little spreader deals spread on one side, pull it out. Once you get the main lens out, you got a battery compartment right here. Mm -hmm. Slide that booger out, and kick the old booger out. Slide the new one in to the holder, like so. And you slide that pump right back in there. Boom. Test. Can't see shit. Excellent. So throw that. There we go. Right down here. Heck yeah. Double check. Excellent. Can you see through it? Mm, not really. Mine in it here or over here? Well, I was thinking back here originally, but that other side, these add-in posts for the rack, uh -huh. they're not in the same exact spot, so instead of having something looking half-ass goofy, I guess I'll mount the sucker here. I gotta grind a little bit of this edge off here, because it's rounded back here on this edge, so it'll fit in there better. It should fit in there really square, but it does have a little bit of curvature to it. Well, there's a gap back here because that it's rounded, so it's pushing it forward. No. So once we take a little off this edge here, off these two, it should fit in there good. Y'all stop it. Then I figure we'll, after that, we'll put this piece in because then I can cut it to length to fit up to this thing. Because of what? Huh? Oh, make sure you set your grinders down wheel up because it has a long spin down. Yeah. If you set it down like you normally a tool with a blade on it like that, it'll take off all over the place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and you don't want that sucker to get you. Heck. fucking something up. Heck yeah. Hey y'all, so we got one ready. So I'll go over here and get my clamps. All right. Clamps the metal that we're gonna weld to, we gotta clean up with the wire wheel though. So right here, all around here, I think. Over here. I think I have to get the hammer straightened up. I got a ding in it up here. Probably don't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna straighten it. Yeah. Back to that top of it. How straight it was. Oh, yeah, a lot straighter. A lot better. A lot straighter. I got it, bruh. Cleaning up the surface. Yeah, you want to get rid of all the contaminants possible, old paint in the back because you don't want that shit in the weld. That's good enough. You're gonna hit this with a weld. Or hit, hit like a weld back here in the corner. Uh huh. And then right here in this corner, that should basically Hold it tie down. it in. Then I run a bead straight across the top here and I catch this one right here. And that should help it out quite a bit. And then I can take the clamps and stuff out of the way. You said curiosity about not cleaning the. Uh, yeah. Uh, what is curiosity? It's like, you don't want your stuff being like a sponge. You know how strong sponge is, is it has all the air pockets in it. Well, the porosity is when you got a lot of contaminants in your weld, it's gonna make it weak because you want something solid. Yeah. You don't want something weak. The same bubbles. with light metals and stuff. Exactly. You don't want one clean and one it's covered in dirty. mud. Yeah, I get it. You metal up to the ground on there. If you don't have the ground, you won't weld. No ground, no weld, y'all. This rookie has a lot of experience, as y'all watched the first part of this. If y'all watched it closely, then y'all y'all already know. A lot of experience in making mistakes. Yep. Since it's my shit, it don't matter. I'll just cut it up and redo it. You always want to clean the first bit of it first, or what? Well, for one, you see the wires bent, mm -hmm. and you see how that first bit has that discoloration? Mm -hmm. On the end of it, there's like a booger effect. Well, actually, on this one, you can actually see. 
you zoom in right there on that very tip, you can kind of see how it looks hollow. There's flux in there, and that's what creates the gas for it to be shielded. Uh, when you hook it up to a bottle and you use argon gas, you don't got that shielding inside the wire, it's solid. So you get a better outcome with your wire with that. Mm -hmm. This here has to create the gas with that flux in the middle. So you get kind of an ugly weld, look like stick weld. Oh. Well, y'all just learned something. <laughs> hey. See, there you go. Dark Vader, y'all. Protect your eyes, you only got one pair. Heck yeah. You hear that, y'all? You hear don't make him, yeah, make him wire y'all up. Really intense light. That's the reason you need to protect your aronas, ain't it? Ain't it called the aronas? Aronas? Oh, what's your it? retina or your, your lenses or eyeballs in general? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said I was gonna spot it in, but fuck it. Let's just weld it. I gotta need to turn my shit up. Here we go. How would you describe welding? Fun. Making two metals join together like you're gluing it. Oh yeah, it looks a whole lot better. You yeah. finally found the magic spot? Uh, kind of. It's hard to adjust your settings because sometimes you're not welding. That's a pretty good uh, weld, dude. That ain't bad for shit work. Now this one over here sucked because I didn't have the temperature up. Yeah. Now I had it uh, way down there on like 4 and I got it up on level 6. That damn blind dog with it. Randy. I've got some pitting right there. Some pitting? Oh, I could have done better. You're going too fast? Uh, a little bit on that spot. I should have had a little bit more of this uh, sway back and forth while I'm doing it like that. Yeah. And that helps bond the two together because the end of the wire is melting and it's arcing here and it helps bond that there too because it's melting the end of the middle there. Oh, yeah? Well, if I don't sway back and forth, there is a little gap. See in this little bit of middle here? Yeah. So I need to fill that in when I'm doing that. So if I just try to stay in that gap right there. Yeah. That arc is just bouncing back and forth between the two. So uh -huh. I need to sway it back and forth so I can get both sides instead of just wherever it wants to. That's what happened here. I didn't have the heat turned up. Oh. But, uh... Pickle? Heck yeah, it's cool. See? Let's finish this top one up. Like stay. I was gonna stay. Wish it looked a little better. It looks good, Rick. Oh, uh, King Solo. Right side complete, huh? Uh, pretty much. Pretty much. We gotta go with the wire brush. Yeah, fuck it. I'm gonna do all that crazy shit. One day I might paint it. One day I might not. I might throw some primer on it. Call it good. Yeah. I'll take the, the paddle wheel. This one right here. Yeah. And get the exterior so it looks decent. This inside shit don't matter nothing. Yeah. It looks good. It looks like you meant to be there, though. It does, don't it? It does, really. Let's take a little break. Cool down for a second. All right. Break, break, break. The grind on the back side? A little bit, so I can get it closer. Remember, it's got that little bit of a fill in the corner. Left side.
Went back. Let me do the, the top to the bottom. Is that no. how it goes? Start in that bottom corner and then pull up. Okay. Start right here and go that way? Yeah, up that, that little slope. Do it. I'm not going deep enough. Well, that's a start. But you can do better. You just need to take time and practice. And you want to have a little bit more balance that you have a hand for. Use it to rest underneath here. So you have, you know, multiple contacts. Uh, you want me to redo it? Uh, we have to clean it up before you redo it because all that slag and stuff will make a dirty weld. All right. Man. And technically, after you do a spot, you want to clean up around it before you actually do a weld, too. But like I said, this is my trailer. I don't give a shit. As long as it stays on there, it's good. All right, then. Well, we'll get back to y'all when we get this cleaned up. and then walk with it yeah that's right okay I understand. So, so basically once you make that puddle uh -huh. you're going to slowly just drag it with the tip of that middle or that tip of that wire there uh -huh. it's like you're going to drag that puddle and you're not really dragging it, you're hmm. just making more puddle as you go okay so which one do you want me to do this one right here you can start there and pull out all right then we're going to retry this one. all right <clears throat> so we got it Walk it back in. Oh, that's good. oh, walk it back in? Yeah, sometimes you get a blowout if you don't. Oh, okay. Uh, but that look good? Yeah, it looks good. All right, Damn it, boy. This is my second time, y'all, but I did a few in uh, shop class. Well, but. a stick is different than wire. Yeah, that's something you're yeah. going to but that's pretty much it for right now. We're going to put the two metal brackets in there and put the little cap in the back. But we've got to get all that stuff cut up. Yep. All right, we'll get back to y'all when it's finished because it's a lot of work and we can't stop and keep stopping and recording. And we'll get back to y'all. It looked good, though. Okay, so we got different kinds of weld. The figure eight is what? Is what? Well, I've seen it more using on TIG or filling up the last bit of a gap. Yeah. But if y'all want to learn that, do, that, do like I do. YouTube. Yeah, it. YouTube. Where to find this out. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not going nowhere, though. That edge still kind of funky on there. Yeah. Once we get the rest of the metal on there, we'll do a little bit of cleanup on all that shit. A little bit about the MIG. Oh, this is wire. Oh. It, it's the same machine, it's just this one right here, so a flex core instead of using gas. Uh, right now, I have it, I got it set on 110. This is for the material. Well, that's the thickness. All right, so let's. That's basically turning your heat up. So the 3 8 what, what do you mean by that? 3 8 3 8 thick steel. Okay. And 24 gauge. That is how thick, basically sheet metal, like up on that roof. That's 24 gauge. Oh, that might be thinner. I'm not too sure. It's all along them lines. We don't need it. Gauge. Well, it's just different gauges and different thicknesses, right. basically. So you got the thin shit all the way to the thick shit. So right. this, technically, if I was to have it plugged in on 220, I should be able to weld 3 8 inch thick, thick steel. This here's your wire feed, how fast the wire comes out. If you're doing a lot of fill, you're going to be wanting your speed up a little bit. But if you're doing just small, tight welds on thin stuff, you're not going to want it to come out too quick because then you're going to be piling up a lot of metal. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just keep this thing on manual. And this up here is flex core. And down here is four. And then TIG on your aluminum. Yeah, TIG you, on aluminum. You get a cleaner, better weld. Like this boat right here, on, on all the spots that it's welded, it's usually done in TIG. Because, like, see how this welds right here? Uh, actually, that's probably a spool gun. What about right here? Weld, weld up on it. That's probably a, well, that's actually probably just a stick weld. This is steel. This frame here, so it's aluminum. Oh, yeah. They're doing nice weld, though. They're not bad. Now this right here looks more along the lines of something like a TIG, but they did a shitty job if it was TIG. Yeah. It's all, it's all bubble, or piled up on there. Well, they're probably learning too. They never know. Two try. Yeah, put one here, then one here to line up these. These look like they go back up in there, and they got like a, a bolt that go in here. So I figure I could run the bolt nut through here, so when this is in there and this slides in place, it'll slide right over the nuts, or Thank the bolts, you. and then I can tighten the nuts up on this side. That'd be good. That second one looks a whole lot better than that first one. Oh yeah, that looks good though. That's about how it looked on the first view of it. Don't touch it, it's too hot. I know. Y'all be cautious now. That looks good though. Yeah, clean it up a little bit. This side. This. That looks good. 
The only thing we lack is that little filler angle piece we was talking about the last video. Yeah, but that's gonna be in a whole nother video today. It took a lot longer than we thought it would, y'all, but... Oop. It wasn't tight. It was just in there for show. <laughs> for sure how it's going. Yeah, y'all. Y'all already know. But it looked good. We still got to weld it in place and stuff. Yeah, it's just tacked in right now. Yeah. It looked good. I'm going to deal with it for knocking it out of place. That's all right. That's all right. Oh, actually, it shouldn't be in here because the damn metal's still hot and it's plastic. Yeah. But it looked fucking... It's good. I still think I need to probably tap it in a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll do that. Hopefully, the tacks will hold. And then we'll trial fit it a couple times before we throw the full weld on it. Yeah, it look good though. Well, y'all already know what it is. Uh, we're gonna have another video for y'all later. Y'all like and subscribe. Yeah.